Good afternoon. I think we must all be here. Welcome. My name is Joan Curtis. I'm part of the Mission and Ministry team here in Leicester. And I'm welcoming you to this session on our fresh expressions of church, merely recycling existing Christians. Looking at some research, particularly from six dioceses. Delighted to welcome Claire Dampra and John Vivian of the Church Army's Research Unit, who are going to be resourcing us in this session. Really good to have you here this afternoon. Thank you. Before we start, shall we pray? Almighty God, bless us today, here, now. Help us to listen, to understand, to discern the wisdom in the room, to hear what is intended and what is your will. For to your name be the glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us this morning. Back in 2012, uh, when our team, headed up by George Lings, began our database research, looking at fresh expressions of church sponsored by the commissioners, now called A Day of Small Things, the Purple Report, we included a question about the church backgrounds of people coming to fresh expressions of church. And we used the terms introduced by the Mission Shaped Church Report back in 2004, churched, dechurched, and non-churched. One of the vulnerabilities of the Day of Small Things research is that in seeking to capture truth, we only have one data source. We only have the leader's opinion on the questions we've asked. And for most of the questions we've asked, that's fine because it's about day and time of gathering, fresh expressions of church type, sacraments, geographical area. But for one or two more complex questions, such as this one, We've always stressed for manageability, we can only record the leader's best guess, and therefore these findings are tentative. We also used a very simple scoring system to derive findings. So back when we published our findings for the first round of dioceses, um, this particular finding drew a lot of attention. People were really excited at the thought that fresh expressions of church might be connecting with so many people of de-churched and non-churched backgrounds, but they weren't always handling the finding with the care that we needed them to. It was, after all, the leader's best guess. So we approached the commissioners and said, could we do a bit of follow-up research talking to attenders themselves? So, today, John and I are presenting our findings uh, entitled, Who's There? on this research question. We collected data from attenders themselves to, as I say, measure the proportions of churched, dechurched, and non-churched. We collected up-to-date estimates from leaders to compare with findings not to blame or shame leaders, but to encourage a culture of care and attention over this issue. We spent a little bit of time looking at what kinds of transfer growth were occurring to try and find out why existing churchgoers might transfer from inherited church to fresh expressions. And while we were at it, we collected data on age, gender and frequency of attendance. Then we repeated all of the above with a control sample of inherited churches. Whether a mission-minded inherited church is just as effective at connecting with the de-churched and the non-churched, we thought was a really interesting question. We can't say much about methodology here and now. Um, it is all written up in our report, but just a few comments on our sample. We're very grateful to uh, the six dioceses that agreed to take part in this. We wanted a variety of fresh expression type in our sample. Um, we list a few for you there. Um, apologies if it's too small to read. This is a table on per page 33 of our report if you want to look at that in more detail. We collected data from a total of 66 fresh expressions of church. 
And we wanted to collect data from adults and children because our database research had made clear the significant number of children involved in fresh expressions of church. For our control study, we collected data from a smaller sample of inherited churches and our special thanks to those churches for taking part in a study that wasn't directly relevant to them. We began by calling the control the parish control, but 57 of our 66 fresh expressions of church were runners. That means they were a type of fresh expression burst within the parish and maintaining close links with the parish. So with so many runners, it became impossible to talk of fresh expressions of church and parishes as completely separate entities. So uh, we then began to use the language of inherited Sunday congregations for our control. Have you ever found that in life, the more you look at something, the more complicated it becomes? Well, as we began to design our research and pilot it, we realised on what basis you categorise someone as churched, dechurched or non-churched presents some significant challenges. If you categorise someone based on their upbringing, their childhood, what if the person's early life is not representative of their longer story? What if they didn't go to church as a child, started going as a student at university, say, and have been going to church ever since, and they're now in their 50s? Does that person really come under the heading of non-churched when they started attending the Fresh Expression a couple of years ago? Or what if they were part of church as a child, but then stopped going as a teenager and young adult? The fresh expression of church has been able to entice them back to church, now they are, say, in their mid-thirties. If you only noted their childhood attendance, you might call them churched, but with their longer story, they would be de-churched. We became clear we wanted to find out about a person's recent status just before attending the fresh expression of church. That was our priority, because that was the way we could test how missionally effective are fresh expressions of church? Are they connecting with new people as we hope they are? But we thought, why not ask adults about church attendance in their previous life stages too? This is an important part of their story. So that led us to the first key finding. The first key finding is about definitions. We realised that the three terms, churched, dechurched, and non-churched, were too simplistic to describe the reality of people's experience. We therefore expanded those three to a further three, making six in all. And uh, bear with me as I try and guide you through our six. At the top, we have the simple non-church, those who are not part of any church before attending the fresh expression of church. Then we have the complex non-churched. They're those who have longer non-church backgrounds, but who were actually already attending a church, maybe the sending church or another, when they began attending the fresh expression. We then have the simple de church those who were part of a church, maybe as a child or a teenager, but left church and have been tempted back to church through attending the fresh expression of church. But then we have the complex de-churched, those with longer de church backgrounds, but again, who were actually attending a church, maybe the sending church, maybe another, when they began attending the fresh expression of church. Church, you'll be glad to hear, is relatively straightforward. People who have been attending church in all stages of their life but before attending the fresh expression. And then lastly, we have those who have grown up in a fresh expression of church, those who have been born into it. In classical church growth terms, this would be called biological growth. So the churched, complex de and complex non-church categories are, as the green arrow show, all existing churchgoers, people who were actually part of a church just before they began attending the fresh expression of church. The purple arrows indicate the new growth, either biological or missional. 
So new people who fresh expressions of church are connecting with. If you yourself attend a fresh expression of church, you might just like to think, which category would you fall into? What were you at the point of joining the fresh expression of church? At this point, I hand over to John. All right, thanks, Claire. Um, I'm now going to take you through some of the findings of our research, but as a disclaimer, these are highly condensed findings for the sake of time today. Um, if you're interested in our, our full findings, you can download a PDF copy of the Who's There report for free on our website, or there are hard copies for sale down at the Church Army bookstall in the cathedral, along with many other cracking reads. Um, <laughs> With that said, um, this pie chart shows the church backgrounds of attenders at Fresh Expressions of Church using the six categories, and these figures include everyone over the age of five, including team members. As you can see, 18% of attenders by this measure, the blue category, are simple non-churched, and 20% are simple de-churched. These categories refer to people who had no church connection when starting to attend the Fresh Expression of Church, and our findings show that FXC, short for Fresh Expressions, have reached both groups in roughly equal measure. 29% of attenders fit into this rather narrow definition of church. Uh, that refers to people who have been churchgoers their entire life. 19% of attenders fit into the complex de-church category, 6% into the complex non-church category. And these complex categories are very broad groups. They include people who've been churchgoers almost their entire lives and only had short breaks for a few years, uh, as well as people who've been absent from church almost their entire lives. They're quite, quite broad groups. And 8% fit into the grown-up in FXC category. These are young people who've attended the Fresh Expression of Church since before they were five. And for some of these young attenders, the fresh expression of church is the first and only church they've ever known. Now, the categories that refer to existing churchgoers, the church, the complex de church, and complex non church, account for a combined 54% of all attenders. And so, as a considerable proportion of attenders already attended church before attending the fresh expression of church, it is interesting to see, to look at the motivations behind why these people started coming along. So this next chart relate, uh, retains the categories that relate to new growth, the grown up, the simple non, and the simple D. Um, but it breaks up the existing churchgoers into groups based on their motivations for attending. So looking at those green, oh, I pressed the wrong button, there we are. Um, looking at these green categories, 17% were part of the team and we, exist, we expected um, a large proportion of attenders uh, to be part of the team based on work our, our team had already done. So this came as no surprise. But what was a surprise was that 23% of all attenders were blending, which means that they still attend another church. Now we do know that 57 of the 66 FXC in our sample were runners, maintaining close links to the sending church, which may go some way to explaining this trend. But it is clear that a lot of existing churchgoers now also attend a fresh expression of church either to offer support for their or perhaps their children's benefit or for other reasons. And finally, as you can see, transfer growth accounts for just 14% of all fresh expressions of church attenders. And we titled this session, Are Fresh Expressions of Church Merely Recycling Existing Christians? And we hope this figure may go some way to debunking that myth. And I should add that that 14% includes people who started attending because they moved to the area and were looking for a new local church. Just briefly, it is interesting to see how the findings for church background change when team members are taken out of the equation to give an impression of who has started to attend fresh expressions of church that weren't part of the sending team. As you can see, the percentages have grown up in FXC, simple non church and simple de-church increased by these, this measure, uh, while the other three categories, church, complex de-churched, and complex non-church, decrease. And if you consider those categories that relate to new growth, the simple de-church, simple non-church, existing churchgoers, um, just over half of all attenders 
by this measure had no church connection before attending the Fresh Expression of Church when you take team members out of the equation. Looking at age and gender demographics, the Fresh Expressions of Church in our sample had a young age profile. A combined 37% of all attenders, that's looking at these first three purple groups here, are children and young people aged under 16, while at the other end of the spectrum, looking at the two slightly grey categories, 15% uh, of attenders were aged 65 or older. The median age of an attender at a fresh expression of church is somewhere between 25 to 34 in that age bracket there. In terms of the gender balance, we did find that 61% of attenders at Fresh Expressions of Church were female and 39% male, which may suggest that FXC faced the same challenge as inherited churches in reaching out to men. As Claire mentioned, we conducted the same survey at a number of inherited Sunday congregations to act as a control or comparison to our findings at Fresh Expressions of Church, and I'll just mention some of the headlines from this. Firstly, we found that far fewer attenders were simple non-churched, only 6% of attenders. However, slightly more attenders were simple de-churched, 26%. But, in conducting the research at inherited churches, we quickly realised that they were a completely different animal uh, to fresh expressions of church. So while most FXC were started within the last 10 years, most inherited churches have existed for decades, if not centuries. Our categories for church backgrounds are based on the attenders' status when they started attending the church being surveyed, which for attenders at inherited churches could have been decades ago, and attenders could since have had a very long church background. We found that nearly half of the simple de church and simple non church attenders at inherited churches had attended the inherited church for more than 10 years, and so to some extent had become part of the furniture. Finally, we found that transfer growth accounted for 78% of existing churchgoers starting to attend the inherited church, or that's 46% of all attenders, almost half, and that 46% compares to just 14% at FXC. In terms of age and gender demographics, we found inherited Sunday congregations had a far older age profile. 50% of attenders were aged 65 or older, and only 12% were under 16. The median age of an attender at an inherited Sunday congregation in our sample was equivalent to that of Bonnie Tyler, the Welsh power ballad queen. <laughs> Go with this. Whereas the median age uh, at Fresh Expressions of Church was equivalent to that of pop star Ellie Golding, who I'm obliged to say is the patron of Church Army's fantastic Marrow the Bone project for homeless women in London. Um, and yeah, finally, in terms of uh, gender dem dem uh, demographics, 66% of inherited church attenders were female and 34% male, so an even greater proportion of women uh, at inherited Sunday congregations uh, were female than, than at FXC. Um, just quick, quickly, while I've got a picture of Bonnie Tyler on the screen, I'm going to paraphrase the opening line of her song, Holding Out for a Hero, by suggesting that the question of where have all the good men gone it's quite pertinent to both inherited churches and fresh expression of church. And on that note, I'm going to turn around <laughs> and hand back over to Claire. <laughs> so as we finish, um, what did John and I conclude? Well, uh, we concluded that the terms church, dechurched, and non-church were too simplistic as research definitions. This is a complex phenomenon because people's lives are complicated. The fresh expressions of church in our sample had made some progress in connecting with people who weren't existing churchgoers. 38%, roughly two-fifths missional growth. Is this good news? It's a value judgment, isn't it? We had hoped it would be more, but others have said they're quite encouraged by 38%. And I wonder, would you be willing to raise your hand and indicate, are you encouraged by 30%? Yeah. And is anyone actually disappointed and hoped for, for more? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> 
Our control sample contained very few non-churched attenders, though a reasonable proportion of people from a de-churched background. And as John mentioned so memorably just now, taken as a whole, our sample of attenders at Fresh Expressions of Church showed a younger age profile. It is important for leaders to be as aware as they can be about who is attending so they can remain effective in mission. Yes, it's lovely to get a good crowd at your fresh expression of church gathering, but who is actually attending? Is it well-meaning members of the inherited congregation lending their support, or is it new growth as we hope? We would say, um, don't be tempted to give away your copy of Mission Shaped Church to Oxfam just yet. It's important we don't forget the original intention behind Fresh Expressions of Church as outlined in that 2004 report, which was and is to plant new churches and congregations for people who are not already existing churchgoers. <laughs> 